Hello everyone, and welcome to the MLOps workshop. In this video, we are going to be discussing some of the common approaches for serializing PyTorch models. All machine learning frameworks have framework-specific commands for saving models to disk. So we can see here that PyTorch provides a .save method. Here we can pass in our model and the path to where the model should be stored. Torch.load is another provided method for deserializing and loading a model into memory. There are also options to serialize a model state dict rather than the model directly. We will see the difference between a model and a state dict shortly. Of course, there is also the option to serialize a model to disk by calling the pickle library directly, but under the hood, the torch.save command is actually using this library as well. While calling torch.save to serialize a model is probably the quickest and easiest approach, it's actually not the recommended approach. Serializing the model state dict is the PyTorch recommended approach. Let's see why. So now we're going to see a few examples of saving a model using PyTorch's.save command on the model directly, as well as saving a model state dictionary. We'll see the difference between the two. Now, most of the content in this notebook isn't super important, um, you know, like the data preparation. It's more so the main takeaway is going to be uh, why saving a model state dictionary is preferred over um, pickling a model directly. So I'm just going to quickly walk through uh, the most of this uh, workbook. So here we're just getting the uh, using wget to get an iris data set, just some standard data pre-processing. developing a train and test split. And here we can see our model. Like I said, it's just a standard MLP model. Okay, great. We now have a trained model. This is a record uh, that I just pulled from the training data set. So these features belonged to a, a Satoza record. So it did predict the proper class because Satoza was mapped to the zero index. Okay, so in this cell, I was just mounting um, the notebook to my Google Drive so that I can save the uh, models. Okay, so here you can see we're going to call torch.save on a model directly, and we're going to pass in a model path, giving it the iris underscore model name. Okay, so now if we run an ls, we should be able to see Great, there's an iris underscore model dot pt. Loading that model back in is as easy as typing torch dot load. Okay. We can see here's our architecture that we um, briefly covered above and predictions still work. It still uh, predicted the correct class. Now down here, we're gonna see a different approach. So we can see this is what a model object looks like. So what does a state dictionary look like? We can see it's quite different. And we're seeing some keys with weights and biases. Um, basically, in PyTorch, everything that is a learnable parameter will have a state dictionary associated with it. So that's what all of these uh, numbers are. So just like above, we're going to call torch.save, but this time we're going to call it on model.statedict and we're going to name it iris underscore model underscore state dict. And if we run an ls, we can see we have our iris underscore model and our state dictionary as well. <clears throat> Loading this state dictionary back into a model is uh, as easy as calling model.load state dict. So not model.load this time, um, load state dict. And we can see predicted the same values. So now we're going to step over to a separate notebook. This is in a completely different runtime. It has no knowledge of any of these cells that were run in this notebook. So we can see over here, the model is named Iris Net. When I copy and paste this over to a separate notebook, so we can see we have access to the iris model and the state dictionary that we saved in the previous notebook. So we can see this is the exact same architecture. I copy and pasted this over from the previous notebook, but I just renamed it to iris net new. So now 
we can see we're going to try loading in the model directly. So model equals torch.load, just like we ran in the previous notebook. And we can see we get an error. Can't get attribute iris net on model main, module main. So the problem here is that pickle doesn't actually save the model class code. What it does is it saves a, the path to the file that contains the model class. So because of this, I mean, even the directory structure of a project is also tied to the serialized object, meaning if you change a directory name, for instance, in your project, it could be a breaking change. Um, I've actually been burned by this a few times. Uh, once before, when I was creating a custom estimator using scikit-learn, I refactored uh, a directory structure of my project after serializing a model using Pickle. And when it came time to load the model in, the, in a deployment environment, the process was broken for this exact same reason. It was looking for a class in uh, you know, a, a directory called ABC, but that directory was no longer there. It was DEF. Um, so we can see it, this tightly couples the uh, file name, class name, file structure to the model itself, which isn't great. So now we can see I have uh, another pasted version of the model, but this time with the correct name. So now if we try loading it in, we can see it works. So, and the only reason it worked is because we now have this iris net class name, um, which was what we had before when we serialized the model in this original notebook. Load it in, call model dot predict and you can see it's still predicting the proper class. Now let's see the difference between loading in a model directly versus loading in a state dictionary. So here we can see I'm setting model 2 to iris new. Okay, so this is the first model that was broken when we tried uh, loading in the model directly because we didn't have an iris new class, we had an iris new net new. So what happens if I initialize model 2 to the first instance and we call load state dictionary. So this time it works. The class name of our model is not tied to the learnable parameters, which is great. And this is actually why it's the recommended approach um, versus pickling the model directly. And we can see it still predicted the, uh, the correct answer. You can see that by serializing a model state dictionary as opposed to serializing the model itself, it, you know, it decouples our model's learnable parameters from class names or directory structures, um, which is a much better solution. But you know, this isn't the end of the solution. This is that this doesn't get us the whole way there. Um, and let's look at why. So. You know, we know that this load state dictionary process worked. Um, it was better than just loading a serialized model directly, but we still have to, you know, instantiate this model, right? We need this class, the code, our model code to be, uh, you know, present in whatever environment we're running this from. So let's say it's a deployment environment. Um, you know, how do we get this class code into the deployment environment so that you know we can call model underscore two equals iris net new. Um, do we get clone a repo to a, a deployment environment and access the code directly that way? Maybe we make it pip installable so that we can access the uh, the class via you know just like a standard Python package. Um, all of this is going to be covered in the packaging section, which is going to be the next uh, series of videos here, and we're going to see how. We can package the code and the serialized objects so that downstream deployment tools um, can access the, the model and deploy it in a standardized fashion.